Hello and welcome back. So today is a bit of a different episode, really. Today we're going to be talking about something that was requested and that I kind of want to cover, which was really a combination of several different things. The main topic was how do I, or how is the best way to grind out tanks? What's the best way to get up the lines and get up the tech trees? And then another question was, how do I keep and earn money? You know, how what's the best way to earn experience and stuff like that? And we're going to take a long, detailed look. This is going to be mostly a discussion, and at times I will throw some gameplay on in the background, but generally, this is how I want to walk through it. So, when talking in this game about how do I get down the lines, how do I, what's the most efficient way to play this game, really? There's really three different factors to consider, and one I'm going to talk about firstly is what happens if you're someone that doesn't really spend any money on this game, that they don't have a premium tank, and they don't have a premium account. Now, this is the most difficult, obviously, out of the three. And this is where you need to make a decision, and it's kind of hard to make a decision early on. For instance, it doesn't make sense in this game economically to run up all the lines at once. Without a premium account, and without premium tanks, you're not going to make it up to tier 9 or 10 anytime soon if you go up all of these lines at once. The smartest move I always tell people is get to a tier 10 that seems to fit your playstyle as quickly as you can. Now, I, to be honest guys, your first line up to a tier 10, I know it's sometimes contradictory to what people say, but I wouldn't worry about statistics guys. Your first four or 5,000 games, however long it takes you, um, really your first grind up to a tier 10, don't worry about stats that much. Learn about just playing the game and try to observe what you have try to look at replays don't worry about win eight and stuff like that just more worry about you playing and enjoying the game but take some time to learn that being said once you reach a tier 10 the funny thing is you're going to be able to now play your all your tiers leading up to it and earn experience this free experience or you can even choose to use them to bank some experience to convert but the point being I would suggest that with your first line in this game, I would keep any tanks you are good at or any tanks you enjoy. So for instance, for the American uh, medium line, I kept the EZ-8, the Pershing, the M46, and the M48. If that was my first line, I probably would have kept the T-20 also because I remember liking that way back when I played in like 7.0 or something like that. Um, what you're going to want to do is play the tank that you're best in to make some money, generally anywhere from tier 5 to tier 7s. Tier 7 mediums are kind of the exception to most things. Most tier 7s don't make much money, but the mediums are pretty good at making money. Things like the T20 with decent alpha damage and low cost per shell, but anyways. So the point is to get up to a tier 10, so you can then start banking some experience, some already converted experience. As you can see, I already have 7,000 laying around. Now, What's going to be good is if you go up another line, you can get all the way up to a tier 4 with around 7,000 experience. And without premium, which the reason I'm discussing this is because right now I haven't had premium for a week now to test this out. I was able to earn 7,000 experience running 6 or 10s. Not playing necessarily a lot, playing probably 80 battles in the last few weeks, which is about average, about on par, 40 battles a week roughly i'm trying to conduct this relatively scientifically guys but the point being once you get to that tier 10 you can use that experience to go up other lines you want so a really good example is recently i've been going down the german line what i did is i went all the way up to the e50 i'm sorry the e75 my bad i remember i went up to the tiger one and tiger two and e75 and i only plan to get the e75 the e100 i might get and the point is i used these tanks to play and have some fun and research them, then keep the free XP and put it in the bank is what I call it, banking it. And then I actually skipped right through the VK3002M and I didn't play much of the Panther. So you're able to do this more efficiently. Now the more tanks you get, the more you're able to do this. And that's why I stress getting tier 10s because I, I don't have a lot to choose from, I have five of them. But something to consider is with your times twos every day, if you have five of them to choose from, you can get four or five hundred, even sometimes on a good day, a thousand already converted experience. 
And if you do this quite often, you can really push yourself right through these grinds without even playing them that much. Now, once you pick your first line, let's just say that, you know, for the sake of keeping this the same, I've gone up through the American Mediums and I'm AM48. What I would then do, the smart way to do it, is to keep playing those tanks you're already good at. Get enough experience to get yourself up to around tier 4 or 5. I Personally, I don't mess around with the low tiers if you want to. Totally understandable. But I'm talking about the most efficient method. Without having premium, without having premium tanks. Get yourself up to tier 4 or 5, and then start playing those. Now, keep in mind guys, keep a look at the calendars and look for when sales come on. You want the most efficient method to get through? Go through the lines that you know that are going to be on sale that you like, or even better yet, wait. If you have a tech line that you want to go up, let's just say it's the, let's just say it's the Russian tank destroyers. That's the next one you want to go up. You wait till they go on sale to buy them. And I know that seems being very patient, but if you're patient enough, you can wait. Now, granted, if it's the only other line, so be it. But that's also about conserving credits. Now, on the topic of conserving credits, always try to buy consumables when they're on sale. You know, I don't have a lot currently. Let's see. I, I have a few. I have a few stuff. Why do I have extra combat rations? Oh, whatever. But in Depot, as you guys can see, I have a few of those. And I have around 100 or so of those. The reason is every time they're on sale, I buy them half off. That way you end up saving a lot of money in the long run. Instead of being 20000 per, it's 10000 per. And it increases the amount of money you make in profit, because they cost less. And that really doesn't hurt your profit margin much. And if you buy them in bulk, it's easier in terms of economically to figure out what you're spending. So, I would definitely highlight those in terms of making money. Now, in terms of grinding a tank itself, this is where it gets a little bit more intricate, should I say. What you need to consider is, is your goal to get the tier 10? Is it your goal to get the whole line done? Are you trying to do this as efficiently as possible, or are you someone like a completionist? Now, I have a couple friends um, that, back in the day when we played this, they, would, they wanted to research everything because that's what they wanted to do. Which, hey, fine, it's a game, I get it. But, I would hasten to add that your goal for your first couple grinds is just to get up top, to get to the higher tiers as soon as possible. So, on certain tanks, I would skip certain guns. Look for things that are irrelevant, that you're not going to need or not going to use. Or better yet, look at things that you don't necessarily need right now. A great example, was it the, uh, oh yeah, it's the American. Great example is with the M103. This M58 gun, compared to this gun, the difference is a bit... Same alpha damage, slightly better penetration, slightly better rate of fire, but is this gun worth 60,000 experience? Over a third of the way to the E5. Most people say no, and I would tend to agree with it. That way, I would not get that M58 gun, considering you just get it on the E5. So you research the E5, then you have it on the M103. So when doing these lines and researching tanks, I would suggest to look at every tank of the line and see what guns overlap. And I'm going to do this right now live with you guys on the check line. As I'm, I'm kind of doing exactly what I was talking about. I'm playing other tier 8, 9s, and 10s, banking up the free XP, and I want to make my way up to the tier probably 5 or 6. So, I'm going to start with the LTV. So I see this engine is available just on this tank. This gun, available on just this tank. So I'll probably skip researching those two and go straight to the, the 39. And look at the engine. I generally look at engine first. Obviously, tracks are specific to the tank. Radios are good to look at. Okay, so it's on the Skoda T25 and T24. This gun is just to this tank. Okay. Good to know. I think the check line is mostly like that. Yep, so that one's for the next one. So here's something I would say, guys. Notice this tier 9 radio, which costs 7,000 research. At tier 5, that's quite a bit is also researchable on the tier 6. Now, on average, the higher tier you are, the more experience you earn. And especially comparing the difference at tier 5 in radios, personally, I generally 
don't care that much about the radio. Depends on who you are, if you want to go for it, fine. But effectively, if you're talking about the amount of battles put in for the experience gained for the cost, considering it costs the same at Tier 6, I would skip that radio and get it at Tier 6. Now, going to the Tier 6. Yep, you have to get those. That one I would get at this tier. This engine is available just on that tank. This is a T-34-100. Now, ah, there's an auxiliary turret. And this 850 meter radio, I would not get. Because you already have a 5... Ah, the 525 might be good enough. That's really up to you. 9,000 experience on a tier 7 isn't terribly a lot. But I would definitely go for the turret first on that. Which actually... Live, I want to compare the differences, because let's see, is this worth 7,900? And remember, if you're trying to go up the line, the biggest thing you're comparing to is not relative to the other modules, but to the tank. This is less than 10% of the total grind of the tank. Thus, even if it only gives you a slight advantage, in terms of view range and traverse, and the armor is the same, I would still get it. Because it's not a big setback in the whole grind. And that's the way you really have to look at this. Now, here's a great example of a tank that you could choose to fast track. Or you can choose to spend another 34,000 experience on guns that, well, do you really need? And this is what we're talking about. It's 156,000 total for the Tier 9. And the engine, because it's a medium tank, you're going to need you can't skimp on that. That's one thing about the mediums. You're going to have to bite the bullet. And get... Actually, it's quite a big difference from 600 horse to... 7. Yeah, you're going to need that. But the one thing to compare with... Is at tier 8, this stock 88. It's not going to work. This 100 mil you get from the T-34-100. So you know you're going to have this. These two guns are the new ones. I'm going to get this guy out of here. So, this one we're going to put over here as the stock gun you're going to have in this tank. Now, what to ask yourself is, are these worth the upgrade? And I would say this. With the Tier 9, you're not going to have this 105. This 105 is only on the Tier 8. And looking at the stats, it has less penetration, not as accurate, and longer aim time. And worse rate of fire, the DPM of this 88 seems to be better. So why bother researching the 105 if you're just trying to fast track up the line? At that point, it seems like the 88 would be the proper medium tank gun, which has decent stats for a tier 8 medium tank. That would definitely work. But I hope you guys see what I'm doing. I'm looking through, like, here, here's another good example. This gun, a tier 9 gun, is 41... 48,000 research, uh, but the gun that you get, that's more, that reminds me more like a T-54's gun. Whereas the R11 that you can upgrade to, better pen, same accuracy, a little bit better aim time, but same damage. But this, the R11 has a lower rate of fire, which means lower DPM than the A20. Then the fully upgraded gun, which you have to get no matter what, is the one with the magazine. So it seems like, in this case, you would disregard the R11, save the 48,000 experience, and put that towards the turret, and then you'd be a third of the way to the AK-1. Obviously, you have to get the other modules here. But, <clears throat> I hope you guys are following the logic behind that, and understanding how that goes. Now, let's move on to... Oh, oh my god, didn't mean to do that. Let's move on to a discussion of the topic of... Premium time and or versus premium tanks. Now, this is kind of a... Everybody has their own different opinions on it. But I will say in terms of statistically what makes sense. And logically. If you can play this game on a regular basis. If you're going to commit 5, 10 hours a week, whatever. Even just 2 or 3 hours a week. Premium time makes sense, obviously, if you can afford it. However... If your schedule is very sporadic, if you're not going to be on all the time, not going to be on often, I would always say go with premium tanks. You can never go wrong with having 
a few premium tanks. Now, here's something else to add. When buying a premium tank, make sure you buy a tank that fulfills the criteria of whatever you need. Do you need a crew trainer? If you need a crew trainer, you get a tier 5. That's why even though I don't regularly play tier 5, I have several tier 5s that are only for crew training. Tier 5s have a very good bonus for crew training. Do you need credits? Well, I would say buy a tier 8 or a tier 7 you're really good in. For instance, lately for me, it's been my KV-5 with the recent armor buff on it. It's great at printing credits. If you need something consistent, the T-34 is a great example, or even the FCM-50T. And I'm just going to flaunt my Type 59 because I can, but I digress. Or do you need a tank that you want to improve your statistics in? Something like, for instance, an E-25 comes to mind. Or even the uh, T-25, I, I statistically you can do quite well in. Or even the Cromwell, which as you guys can see I'm not that good in, but I'm getting there with the B. So the point is you need to identify with a premium tank the kind of situation you are with this game. And what do you need out of it. Now, the similar rules apply. I always recommend going for, if you're a new player, a tier 8 with preferential matchmaking. The reason is you already get home field advantage at that point. You already get a tank that's not going to see tier 10s. For instance, FCM50T comes to mind. Type 59, Yag Tiger 88. You got the Super Pershing. Um, drawing a blank, but I know there's many more. You got the KV-5. You got the, I already said the E-25. You even got the T-7 Combat Car, which you can't really buy right now. You got the Churchill 3, which you can get. And the list goes on and on. Valentine 2 only sees tier 4 high. That's one of the best tanks to rig the game in, basically. But... The point is, get yourself a tank that's not going to put you on hard mode. For instance, I would suggest, if you're a new guy, stay away from things like the CDC. The M4A1, I'm kind of on the fence about that for a new guy. Easy to play, but really easy to get killed in. You don't have many options, so... But the point is, with any of these tanks, identify why you're getting them. That's the biggest thing. You would be smarter to invest in tanks that are always on sale uh, go for that first you know tanks like for instance the Skoda was on sale that's why I picked it up same thing with the FCM and the Cromwell and you know T30 actually no, that one wasn't on sale when I got it but the SC100Y was on sale and the Yag Tiger was it's worth getting them on sale and it's a big it's a big chunk of change when you think about it. like the T34 is $50 like I still think the prices in this game are ridiculous but I'm so invested in the game at this point <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. So, to sum that up really quickly, get premium time if you're going to be on often, because I will tell you right now, there are even tier 10s that I make a profit in. The Object 140, I make a profit in. The M48, I make a profit in running premium. T54, I make a profit in. M46, I make a profit. I'm at tier 8... Tiger 2, I make a profit. T49, I make a profit. That, I make profit. T32, I do. The point is, guys, I can go down the list, but your best effectiveness is at tier, roughly tier 6. So, tanks that I would suggest if you buy premium, but you don't want to buy a premium tank. Hellcat is a good example. EZ8, Cromwell, T37 makes a lot of credits. Um, or even... What's the other tier 6 I'm thinking of? The ARL makes good money. So does the 12T. And then I'm forgetting one more. Nope. Oh my god, I did it again, guys. Nope. Okay. Where is it? Oh yeah, 5916. That's what it was. So, the point is you guys gotta figure out the way that you're gonna make your money. And here's something I suggest in this game in the long run. If you can, keep your tanks from previous lines previous tiers if you look at my german tree notice i have the tier 7 8 and 9 on the heavies i know for the mediums i don't have the panther 2 and the panther that's just because i hated them i'm sorry guys but i didn't like them these three i like so i kept them but i also kept them because i know they're some of the tanks that are used most often for instance look at the american heavy line tier 6 is used a lot tier 7 is used a lot tier 8 is used the tier 9 i might i might not keep Knowing me, I probably will because I really like tier 9. And then tier 10, obviously. I'll keep. 
so make sure you guys look at the grinds you're doing. Like, I'm keeping the Cromwell, obviously, and I obviously have the Comet. I'll be keeping the Comet when I get the Centurion. It's cheaper in the long run to keep the tanks, even if you think you don't use them that often, than to sell them and then rebuy them later. You end up losing a lot of money just selling and rebuying tanks. And the reason is I want to show you guys exactly what this costs. If I were to sell my T-37 with everything on it, it would sell for just under 500000 And that's with the modules on it. Now, if I go to buy a T-37, it's 910000 That's without the modules, guys. You could spend easily another one 200000 on these. Because think about it. The gun... Uh, I know that costs 64000 That's the autoloader. That's about the same. The turret I know costs about 10, 15000 The engine I know I think costs around 30 or 40. The tracks cost around like 10 or 11. And the radio costs around 50. I actually think, what's the radio cost again? I think it's about 50. So the point is, you guys can do the math there. But that's just a tier 6 scout. What happens if you buy and sell back things like tier 9s? Let's look at my E50. The gun is 225. The turret's 52, right over... Right, um, 275. 360, 350. <laughs> over 400,000. <000. laughs> like, this is over 400,000 just to put the mo top modules on the E50. So if you sell this thing and buy it back, you already have to subtract 400,000 from what you lost. That's assuming you don't keep these modules, because most people don't want to buy an older gun or an older turret or engine just to throw it back on. So, something to consider. You end up losing a lot of money in the long run by doing that. If you really don't need it, so be it. Something I'd also say in that category is buy, equip, buy uh, tank slots when they're on sale. For 150 gold, it's not bad. I still think they should adopt what Armored Warfare did. And give you free tank slots. You have an unlimited amount of tank slots in Armored Warfare. In which case, that means I never sell a tank. I've never sold a tank in Armored Warfare. I'm not going to. I'm all the way at Tier 6 on a couple lines. And I probably have 30 tanks in the garage. Because why bother selling them if it doesn't cost me to keep them? And if Wargaming were to give us unlimited tank slots, I'd like to see some of that gold refunded. Because uh, as you guys see, I've spent a lot on tank slots. You know, so... Now, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll be honest with you. That's kind of my little summary there, my little bit of what I wanted to talk about. I know some people asked about it. It's kind of a bit of a different video than what I usually do. So here's what I'm going to say, guys. If you guys have any more tips down below, any more comments about really the best way to make earn money, anything else that I've missed or you'd like to add, definitely add it down below. And also, you guys can request down below any kind of videos you guys would like me to do. If it's on any of the tanks that are out there, any tanks that I have in the garage, as you guys can see right now, you guys can pause the video, stop, and look, and say, hey, what's this tank? What's that? Let me know, because um, a lot of the YouTubers have not been keeping up with how these tanks have been changing. Great example is the M48. I know Quickie Baby did a video, but, you know, a lot of other YouTubers completely missed over the fact that the M48 got a buff. Man, I've been loving this thing. But a lot of tanks do change over time. So, that being said, give me a like down below if I'd really appreciate it, guys. Make sure you sub to the channel. And that shall be it for this episode. And I shall catch you next time.